Dear Leo, it's an honor for me to be part of this uh, wonderful celebration of your decades of unselfish service at The Voice of America. Uh, you have been a source of inspiration, a mentor, and a great friend to so many of us. When I first discovered Leo Sarkeesian on the pages of the Washington Post, I knew he'd make a wonderful profile for public radio, but I had no idea he'd be a force of nature and a Renaissance man as well. here and he's there. Very nice. We've been moving all the vinyl over here. Hi. Yeah. And um, how often is he working? He was working in the summer uh, almost every day. Yeah. Then he had to go back to school so he's in the middle of trying to rearrange his schedule. Oh. Yeah. But the real to reels don't worry Leo. They are just stuffed in that other office for now. Oh. So nothing's gone. The, there's one album, the New York Fair, that I did for the New York Fair, uh, fair way back, what, 1965, the Orchestra Gekadu. Gekadu? Gekadu. 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 Guinean Orchestra. You did Very it. famous, yeah. Orchestra, Orchestra de Dance de Gekadu. Mm -hmm. And it's got the World's Fair thing on the uh, cover, and it's got, somebody's looking for the picture. You know, it would be right the here, vinyl. Leo, because we moved all the vinyl, almost all. Mm. And this, not this one. That's Ghana. This is Ghana. These are all the, the albums that he did. Not this one? No. Then there's this? No. All right, well, that's all we have so far. But uh -huh. the, well, of yours, that's all that I understand that's yours. Well, Okay, it was very famous. Uh, was it an album or was it a um, 45? It's a regular album. There might be, oh, there's a lot in here we haven't even looked at yet. This place is never, it, it, it's always got more and more stuff. <laughs> How is that? How about, there's... But every time I come, I see, I look at some of the old ones, my God. And I turned it on. Yeah. Those orchestras were so great. Oh, Some know. of them. What, what, did you, what did you want? When you hear, you want to hear guitar. Those African guitar players. I don't think anybody can beat them, right, Heather? No. Nobody can beat the African guitars. God, they're so beautiful. J'avais dessiné. Sur le sable, son doux visage. God, so beautiful. I was just listening to somebody's interpretation of Bosco. Yeah. Oh. A, an American guy who went and studied yeah. in like 1975 right. or something. Yeah. Down in when it was Zaire. Yes. And went and found him and studied guitar, guitar style. We've got it here too. Do we, Bosco? Bosco, Bosco yeah. Bosco, of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, she's doing a good job, honey. Yes, it's starting to look, shape up nice. Yeah, new age. We're trying to make Deborah from Ethiopia. Yeah. So that we can 
we Did you can, go to we can start organizing stuff and oh. adding yeah. So much can be said about Leo Sarkeesian. He's a trailblazer in the field of ethnomusicology. He's rich with things that money simply cannot buy. <laughs> He's been one of the greatest people um, to have gotten to know in my life. He's, uh, his personality is very infectious. That's good, thank you. How are you? Okay. Good to see you. Same here. Uh, Hello. Arguably, one of the most enduring figures that has ever walked the corridors of the Voice of America is that of Leo Sarkeesian. I was born in Lawrence, Massachusetts, so was my wife. Although we didn't know each other, uh, until after the war. I was in the uh, U.S. Army uh, during World War II, and my wife was uh, in the Navy. And uh, when we got discharged in uh, 45, we, we met each other at a dance, and she was in her uniform, I was in my uniform. We looked at each other. Because I was an artist, I went to New York and I immediately got a job as an art illustrator. But all that time that I was in New York, every night I was at the New York Public Library, which is a very famous library, and I started reading everything possible on uh, Chinese music, Japanese music, African music. One day in my little apartment, uh, there was a knock on the door and I opened the door and this big tall man with a sporty cap with a feather in it, big sporty jacket, and he said, I'm Colonel Fogel, president of Tempo Records in Hollywood. I, I would like to have you join my company. I turned my career from art into music, just like that. My whole life it was an old African proverb, when door open, go in. And this goes back then when I was, later when I was working in Africa, in Guinea, President Kennedy had just named Edward R. Murrow as the head of the USIA in uh, 62, his first trip overseas, he came to Guinea, to Africa, he came to my home, and he said, I would like you to come to Washington and join USIA. When door open, go in. And that's, the door was open and I came in that way. <laughs> And since then, of course, it's, uh, I'm still here.